Okay, I'll put one in the chat if you can hear me or hear the music. Put some put a number in the chat. We ain't got a hostile one. Good morning. Oh, you must be on the west coast. Hey, Star Strike. I don't know where y'all at. Y'all at church today? <laughs> y'all at church this morning? I don't know what's going on. Hey, Cherie. I don't know what's going on. Y'all is at church. We in Gapo. Oh, Profita. Did I say that right? <laughs> we in Gapo. Sorry, strike. The music back on. Let's a couple more people come in because y'all, I don't know, everybody sleeping in this late. It's like 2, 2 p.m. on the East Coast, Eastern Standard Time. Alito D, cousin, you said you East Coast in the house. I'm in the house too, y'all see. In the house. East family. Y'all see the title, right? <laughs> hey, flamethrower. I'm going to put that on a loop or something. I'll give y'all a couple, what, probably a minute or two. Then I'm going to start. Y'all hear the music? No, what's up with the music, y'all? Good afternoon. All right, can y'all like the video? Once you come in the room, like the video and share it out, please. Peace, KJ. It's an unoccupied Turtle Island. That's I know that's right. Decolonize as well, because once we, if we unoccupied, we still gonna have colonized minds. People in the Western mindset, right? So they're gonna have to go too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We've gotta decolonize the minds. All right, so how y'all doing this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are, this night, wherever you are in this world? You said, uh hostile one, you said, are you still gonna do a video on boyfriend and girlfriends? Yeah, I'm trying to get more um um do some more research, get some more receipts since people complaining about the receipts. Uh, those that follow me on Facebook know I'm all about the receipts, okay? That's what I was known for a couple of years ago, getting the receipts. 
Okay. Yeah, so I'm still going to break that down. I know I've been giving y'all little bits and pieces of that, but I'm trying to find um, receipts from their sources so you know. But, you know, when you talk to elders and people uh, that know this information, people in these uh, tribes, organized tribes, um, it's common knowledge that we, we invented that whole thing because everybody else was having, um, it was about marriages and courting and it wasn't like you could have like a boyfriend or girlfriend uh, without, well, you couldn't, it wasn't seen <laughs> seen as, um, how do I word this? Because I know the children are watching. It wasn't seen as okay for two people to have relations with each other if they weren't married. But in our culture, it was all right, okay? Because we had uh, birth control and we have other contraceptions and things like that that other cultures didn't have necessarily. Alita Lewis, you always on here and we want the day ones. All right, so we're going to get into Coco Pele in one second, y'all. Because I see uh, not that many people talk about him. The only person I've really seen him talk about is my cousin. Um, he's known as Six Fingers She or Quincy Hot. He's the only other person I see talking about Coco Pele, really. And Coco Pele is like one of the biggest clues that we're indigenous and people don't really talk about him at all. Yeah, we had birth control. We had birth control. The healers, some of the people, some of the elders, the healers still have that information. Okay, I can't, I'm not going to um, give you all that. I'm, I'm not a licensed medical practitioner, so I can't really legally give you all that information online. But thank you, Samuel, for the cash app. Appreciate it already. Um, yeah, but if you want to email me, I can give you some more information on that in private. But I don't know if I can legally talk about it in public. And, you know, and YouTube's so weird. And I've already been shadow banned, so I can see now because nobody's on this thing on live. <laughs> Only 27 of y'all on the live so far, but I usually have a, a lot more people by now. Especially on the weekend. Y'all know I'll be going live in the middle of the day and I have more people. It's not even about that. Uh, people are going to find the information. It's about putting this information out, right? Just because that's what the ancestors want. Wingapo, who you say? Halito, Wingapo, Oshio. Yes, those are three different languages. Halito is a greeting in um, the Chata or the Muscogee language. Wingapo is Powhatan Algonquin language. And Oshio is the uh, Cherokee, Kitawa, Tasali, uh, Anawaiya language. I'm not sure if other Iroquois say Oshio. I know it's a Cherokee word. Yeah. Right flank thrower. Alito Copperhawk. So we about to get into it. Um, so I know I'll be getting these books. So I actually have the book for this. Here. Can y'all see? I don't know if it's backwards for y'all. It's called Coco Pele, Casanova of the Cliff Dwellers. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting title when I see it, but I don't know if y'all can see the pictures. You see the guy right here? Where, where's my finger at? Look at his hair. Right? He has a so-called dreadlocks or locks. And look at the other guy. He has a flat top, right? Now, who else wears these hairstyles? That's all I got to say, right? So he's, um, Coco Pele is actually a deity. Let me look in the book and see the Zach tribe. I know the Navajo. Uh, yeah, locks, right. It was like freeform locks, too. So tribes like the Navajo uh, celebrate him. Let's see other names. The Hopi. Um, some tribes in Mexico, it says Casa Grandes. Okay, here appears in the San Juan Basin as well. I think it's the same area. And the Rio, uh, Rio Grande Pueblo. So among the Southwest Pueblo Indians, 
Coco Pele. All right. And we know the image of the Southwest people that they try to show us. Okay. If you really get deep in that history, a lot of those people aren't the original or aboriginal people of that area. They come from somewhere else. They come from migrations from Siberia, um, from Mongolia, parts of China, <laughs> and things like that. Okay. Polynesia as well, because we know Polynesia was uh, colonized by these people, the Chinese and and then the Mon Mongolians at that time. Okay, Genghis Khan and those people, the descendants of him, colonized that area and then they moved to the West Coast. Okay, so those California people, some of them have that ancestry or they're mixed with it, right? Yeah, Anawaya is a, actually a clan, right? But some people, I don't know where everybody got the idea that that is the name of the. Uh, Cherokee, to Sale, or Cherokee, or uh, Kitawa are the ancient names, right? So, so what about tribes in Northwest Louisiana, East Texas? See, the thing about that is, um, I'm sorry, I got the fan on, that's so why I'm sniffing. Y'all know I got allergies. <laughs> um, the thing about those areas, Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, is that when the Spanish came, they got together with these people who migrated from Mongolia and China and Siberia and those places who were native to the area. They used those people to slave hunt the Aboriginal people. And those people like the Apache and other tribes were enslaved and sent to Louisiana and Texas and Mississippi. There's actually a tribe called I think it's the Choctaw Apache, because those are the descendants of those Aboriginal people who were enslaved and sent to those areas. So a lot of people don't know that. So look at the Choctaw Apache and you'll see them and a lot of them look like us, right? Yeah, the principal people. Most of our names were the people, the real people, the principal people, the true people, the original people. Okay, that's what most of our names mean in our languages. Hi, Walter. Hey, Terry. Okay, hey, L-E. I don't know if that's Lee or L-E. Right, you said Chata. Ch 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 yeah, so a lot of people don't know that some of the Chata people um, who were enslaved, who, some who weren't enslaved because some people got free, are mixed with tribes like the Apache. Uh, the Navajo, the Hopi, these different tribes, okay, the original people. Now you can look at the old pictures from just a hundred years ago of some of those tribes in the southeast, I mean southwest, and you'll see that they're, you know, three times darker than me. And then you see their descendants who are three, four, five, six, seven times lighter than me now, and you like, and they look Chinese. You're like, how did that happen? Well, that that's how it happened. It's called Trading Places. I keep telling y'all about it. I need to make my Trading Places series. And that's not no offense to those people because when you ask them, you're like, okay, how come you don't look like your ancestors? They try to give you these off-the-wall answers and all these things and then come to find out that they're mixed, right? And they, just, they don't want to admit it, okay? So they're mixed with the Asians, Chinese, Mongolian, uh, Siberian people. And then they're recently mixed with those People who came over for the gold rush as well. So get, they get got lighter and lighter. And there's nothing wrong with that, but just don't try to act like y'all the original people. Yeah, identity theft and ethnic cleansing, right? Exactly. And then they know they migrated from other, they definitely know they migrated from other places. So they get mad. <laughs> I'm not arguing with these people no more because they act like people, they act like we don't know, you know, what the real deal is. And they think they can say certain things. And then you, tell them the truth and get an attitude like whatever but y'all please share it out before i get too deep into this because i don't want people to miss it right trading traits yep we're trading a lot of stuff and ain't nothing wrong with people families coming together and whatever if they're mixing whatever it's not about that it's about people lying <laughs> concealing the truth from other people who are also uh, the descendants and actually closer to the real, not real, 
original DNA of a lot of these tribes. That's what that's what I'm talking about here. I can't say people are fake if they're in the tribes and they're doing the traditions. And I'm not saying those people are fake. I'm just telling y'all, they're not admitting that they're mixed and not the real original look of their ancestors. Okay. Anyways, y'all got me off track. <laughs> I'm going to get a whole bunch of uh, trolls in a minute. Peace, Robbie. I've been seeing you in all the chats lately. That's good. So we're going to get into this book. Coco Pele. And y'all see he got locks. I told y'all that. I'm going to start reading some of it from it. But the reason we know about Coco Pele, of course, they didn't listen to the indigenous or native people over there. Because a lot of the rock uh, petroglyphs Coco Pele is in there okay so he is seen as a traveling salesman many you it says may have used the flute to give notice to the villagers that he was coming in peace and was not a sneak enemy so that's another thing that we did like we had that's what the mark the whole marching band thing comes from as well we would if we're visiting town like a large caravan of us or even people that someone might not know. We had music to let people know that we were coming, like the marching band, okay? Stomp, not stomp to y'all. What's, what's the other movie, y'all? <laughs> when Nick Cannon, before he had the turban, Nick Cannon in that uh, drum line, right? We had the drum line or the flute. The flute and the drum are very ancient here in America. So we would have that. Or people would sing songs. We would do chants. We would rap. Okay. That's what we would do. So not all of the cultures, but a lot of them. You said, girl, if they're not the shade of the dirt or sand tone, <laughs> it's out of here. <laughs> I, you said it. I didn't say it. I'm just saying. I, you know, people just trying to exclude certain people when they really don't have room to be doing that. It's very offensive. Instead of welcoming people in who who are from the bloodlines and who look like the original people. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Lando, you said, yep, we know our history and the truth is being shown to them daily. Indigenous souls. Right. You're right. Indigenous rise and the ancestors, the ancient ones are coming back. Right. So let me see if I can show y'all some of the petroglyphs right here. And it might be difficult because I have the book in hand. It's not scanned in. So this is him right here. He got a little one lock looking like little Wayne right here. <laughs> I don't know where the rest of his locks went. Okay. And you see, oop, and you see his feet here. And the hands, three. See, another thing you'll see six fingers and you see, oops. Three fingers. I just took my nail polish off, y'all. On a lot of the petroglyphs over there in the southeast. I don't know what this thing is here. It's like a bird. Um, y'all laughing at me. <laughs> no, he had look like he got one of those. You know how little Wayne's hair look like now. Don't don't try to act like y'all don't know how his hair look. And I think he's doing on purpose. He just got like the free, what they call free form locks, like I said earlier. Um but he has modern counterparts as well in other places like Belize and Central America. So, you know, Guatemala. So, it, you know, he was a figure and he could have possibly been a real person. So they're kind of teetering, teetering, excuse me, in this book. First, they're acting like he's a real person. Then they're acting like he's just a deity. Now, we know in some of our cultures, once you get into the spirituality, a man can become a god or a woman can become a goddess, okay, in our culture. You'll see that in other cultures as well. Those who, who were into ancient Egypt before getting into the indigenous stuff, you know that man can, can become a god, right? It's really not like a god, like the great spirit, not in that sense, not like you created everything, like the creator. It's in a god in spiritual form, okay, that you... Once you die, if, if you reach, reach a certain level of spirituality, once you die, you will be a part of God, okay? A part of the universe, part of the creation or creator in the spiritual realm. That's what they mean by God, okay? So, like, y'all know how the 5 percenters say to God and whatever. It's because they reach a certain level of knowledge, and that's part of a 
part of some of the secret knowledge that they don't tell y'all. Okay. It's like they, in biblical stories, you see Jesus become a God in the story, if that makes sense. Uh, Jesus, you see the journey of Muhammad, different, all these Buddha. Buddha is one of the better examples of a man becoming God, okay. Peace, Liz. Hi, cousin Liz. Uh, you said, yeah, why are you doing your genealogy? It's important to find the truth. Yeah, and your genealogy comes. <laughs> you said you did by Lil Wayne with one lock. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, you said you're in Phoenix. They should be have some of these. You should be able to look up some of the areas. Uh, they said Colorado Plateau, um, Grand Canyon area has some of the... Um, I think they have the Coco, it says Coco Paley Trail now reaches from Grand Junction, um, Colorado to Moab, Utah. Okay. So this is another one of his illustrations. I think like the, the locks then fell off at this point. <laughs> this is another one of him with the flute. And the flute is like one of the most ancient instruments besides the drum and the flute originates in America, which a lot of people do not know. The oldest flute was in the Americas, in North America at that. So, so they describe him as a hunchback. I just showed you that. That's what this, what this is about. Hunchback like this is really because he is so into his craft that he's like hunch, you know, someone who read books like myself and get a little, <laughs> get a little hunch because you're into your books you're into your your flute you know like they say like a trump well not the trombone it's not the trombone like louis armstrong they said his cheeks were inflated because he was so into his craft he practiced so much right so that's what happens so another one in the Rio grand oops it's hard for me to see this See the big circle, that's where he is right there now. He got like two, three locks, like Lil Wayne. <laughs> so, you can see that. Peace, David. Peace, Gio. Yeah, it's a comfortable position. You feel, you know, if you're doing like this, it's a little com you it's comfortable right then, but in the long run, it's not comfortable. So you gotta get your posture together. Yeah, he in the spirit, girl. He in the spirit. <laughs> All right. So let me get some more into this. And they're talking about like some of the signs that they found around here, him of water springs and trails and the gold of spirits. <laughs> so he was a spiritual man as well, right? It's the rock inscriptions. And some of y'all might have seen these on, like, some of these pictures were on the internet a couple years ago. Uh, and Quincy Hot put a lot of the stuff out because they talk about the six finger um, people, the Anastasi. He descends from them, as well as a lot of tribes. So, this is a drawing that they did when they came there. And you can see this is where graffiti comes from, right? These rock drawings, this is what our people used to do, graffiti, okay? That's why people still do graffiti. It's an art. It's an art. You said, what's the name of the book, Lando? Coco Pele, the Casanova of the Cliff Dwellers by John V. Young. Uh, salute, Copper Indian. Hey, peace, Carmeo. How you doing? I'm enjoying your, your series on the um, colonial soldiers. He's got a good, y'all got to check it out. A lot of us descend from these colonial soldiers or these people who are migrating, they claim, who um, immigrated from Scotland and Ireland. And Carmeo just put out a lot of information describing them as dark skin people like us, right? Swarty, uh, brown skin, all those different descriptions of people who from Ireland. Okay, the majority, the majority of the ones he showed were dark skin described as black or black, 
in color and all these different things of brown in color. Um, and it's like, you can't deny the receipts, right? So I got some receipts too, not on that subject, but on um, some indentured servants that I found, children and different things like that. I'm gonna put that out soon too, just you know, riding the wave of what Carameo is doing. I've been sitting on that for a minute. Hey, I'm born here. But well, if y'all haven't seen it yet, check it out. I think it has two videos up now on them. So you'll be able to see the names of your ancestors as well as connect the surnames too. If y'all get getting stuck at a certain area in the 1700s, you could you probably be able to find some information there. Okay. So Here's another picture of the graffiti, okay? And these are telling stories. Every symbol has a story or a meaning to it, a background to it. It's just not like just pictures. Like even with graffiti, some people who are into it know that certain ways, curvatures of the letters and things have meanings to it, okay? Hey, Shibi, Shiba, Shibi, Shiba, <laughs> cousin Shiba. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let me read this. Casanova of the indigenous ones. And we know that's code word for us, right? When they say indigenous ones, um, that's us. The Aboriginal or indigenous people, American Indians, whatever you want to call us. Um, I think what is her name? Oh my gosh, my mind, my mind is blank because I know what I'm talking about. I don't want to mess her name up. But there's a book about the Washita called The Return of the Indigenous Ones. Uh, Empress, I forget her name. I don't want to say it right. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all can look it up. The Return of the Ancient Ones is a book. Um, and she's basically telling y'all who the ancient ones are. Right? So this is the Casanova of the Ancient Ones, the hunchback flute player. Of the multitude of miscellaneous drawings, paintings, and scratchings on the rocks, and in the caves of pre-Columbian people of the Southwest, only one anthropomorphic subject can claim both an identity and a proper name, as well as a gender. Without question, that figure is decidedly male. Okay, so they're making it clear that he is a man. Y'all gonna see why in a minute. <laughs> so y'all embrace, yeah, Empress Vadis, right. Tunica, I think her last name as well. Yeah. So, Alita Jeremy, we better get into it. So, we know Coco Pele is male. He was a traveling salesman, a Casanova, a flute player. So, like the musicians today, they have that Coco Pele energy. A lot of them, when the and the traveling uh, the athletes and other people. Okay, let me not get into that. Coco Paley's frequent and widespread appearance on pottery and in, picto in pictograph suggests that he was a well-traveled and universal and universally recognized deity of considerable potency. Okay, another thing Coco Pele is known for is fertility, as well, male fertility. I'm doing good, Sheba. Um, so he's known for male fertility. And medicine people would make, keep his, have his energy, don't know about energy, use his energy to make certain medicines to help uh, male fertility as well as female fertility. Okay. A personality, an individual, the personification of a legend, a, benefic a beneficent God to some and a confound nuisance to others, such as, such is Coco Pele the famous hunchback flute player, the Kilroy of the Hohokam, thousands of years old, but figuratively speaking very much in the present. Okay. This is, another, this is the same thing that's on the book cover. Y'all can see that. Coco Pele followed by his wife, Coco Pele Na Mana, embellishes a Hokan bowl from Smoke, what is it, Snake Town. How the heck I say Smoke Town? I'm thinking about the street. Snake Town, Arizona, after Goblin. So you see him. And his wife is the one. She got the little Grace Jones flat top right here. You see that? 
Now y'all know, ain't no natives walking around with no flat top. No, I'm not, I, you know I don't talk bad on the natives. I don't really care. Um, but y'all know ain't no natives, no natives walking around with flat tops. No native woman. You see, he had a great, look, she got a grace. His wife is the one with the flat top. She got a little Grace Jones flat top. It's like, it's very apparent. It's no offense to nobody else, but you can clearly see this is us. You got dreadlocks and you got flat top. Grace Jones flat top, okay? Y'all don't, <laughs> you said that Grace Jones. You don't know who Grace Jones is. Go look her up. You Google Grace Jones. Y'all, uh, what was that movie she was in? She's most known for, for that movie. She was like a big model in the 80s. Tall, dark skinned lady with the, she had like a flat top, right? She had the Arsenio Hall flat top. And um, she's very beautiful. Like her face was like chiseled. Like she was, her symmetric uh, she, her face was very symmetric. Boomerang, right? She was in Boomerang. She was like the, was she a CEO or something? She was, the, they're doing that uh, marketing thing for the perfume or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> right, Boomerang. So it, you, come on now, ain't nobody but our women walk around with flat tops. Seriously, y'all know some of y'all aunties and grandma got these flat tops because it's a convenient, once you get older, especially, it's a convenient hairstyle. You got to do much. Just shampoo the top part, and that's it, right? Okay, let me move to the next page. So that this is in Arizona. Somebody said they were in Arizona. This was found in Arizona. Okay, Snake Town, Arizona. I said pull up to your bumper. <laughs> yeah, then she's a Jamaican, right? She has that that she has that strong airwalk face. Arab women, some of them have that strong face, like the chiseledness. Very beautiful. Uh, present day pottery makers, weavers, and painters often use the figure as a decoration, perhaps in many instances with no knowledge of the history or significance of the representation. Fortunately, Coco Pelli has never been a sinister character, never voodooistic but frequently comic. <laughs> that could probably, and y'all remember, some of y'all remember back in the day, uh, Sean and, um, what's the other one name? Y'all, I'm messing up the names to get, they, the Wayne's brothers. They have Coco Pele as their, their logo in the beginning of the show. Y'all remember that. You said your wife, <laughs> oh, you're not your wife. Your aunt been wearing a flat top since the 70s. Exactly. It's a convenient hairstyle, right? Especially, you know, you put it, you fluff it up a little bit. It's cute, especially for older ladies. I don't care. Eccentric personality, right? And androgynous. Yeah, she was known for the androgynous. Like, she brought that in style that they're now still continuing today. They use a lot of the Eastern European models, but she started that whole androgynous stuff. Right. He said, Jamaican men drink slime for fertility. My brother-in-law says that's why the mainland men do not produce enough children. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. They, they, our people used to make these potions and stuff in the name of Coco Pele, using the Coco Pele, uh, yeah, Wayne Brothers, energy, excuse me. I'm like catching air, so I got the fan on. <laughs> Coco Pele appears from San Juan Basin and Monument Valley to Casa Grandes in Mexico. Among the Navajos, the Hopi, the Rio Grande Pueblos, and other westward to desert California. Not surprisingly, his phallic figure is among the thousands at Arizona's Painted Rocks State Park. On the what's it Gila? How, how I say all these big words and then I mess up Gila. <laughs> Gila. On the Gila or Gila River west of Gila Bend, early Spanish explorers made note of the rock carvings and called them Pedras Pentidas or paint, painted rocks. Although the pictographs actually are in incised or scratched rather than painted. Early explorers, explorers, trappers, 
<laughs> the trappers and rappers, the trappers and hunters were not noted for their verbal precision. Okay, so they couldn't talk good. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. Here's another. Somebody don't look at these. They don't made them. They don't put them on a t-shirt. Y'all know how we do. They don't put them on a t-shirt. So you see him and his wife on the t-shirt here. He said, no lack of production of children come from our men in the mainland. I know that's right. <laughs> you watch a, a Yanla, you know that for sure. She's having the men on there with 10, 10, 20 children and stuff on that show. All right. He says, more women here that's thorough and by design. They need to not spread. You know, that's because they was, you know, taking a lot of them bad birth controls. The shot, I think the shot is not good. But like I said, I'm not a licensed for, uh, medical practitioner, so I can't talk about that. Um, but our healers and our medicine people, they used to make the herbs to, you know, make sure that people are fertile. And they also had the birth control herbs like I was talking about. Um, some of the stuff only grows in, in North America. Okay. And a lot of the, other people like the Chinese practitioners are using that stuff now, too. He says she's Jamaican. Yeah, Grace Jones is Jamaican. Okay. Coco Paley's likeness varies um, almost as much as the legends about him. But by and large, he is unmistakable, grotesquely hunchback, usually phallic in the extreme. <laughs> and <laughs> y'all didn't cover the children's ears. And nearly all, always playing some sort of flute or flag violet, flag violet, mm. F L A G E O L E T. So Coco Pele is, you'll see in these pictures. I don't know, we haven't gotten to them yet. But here's the hunt track, like I said, showing that he's so into his work, right? And the flutes, you see the flute coming out of his mouth, right? This one is from, where is this from? Group of four crude flute players and plum serpent in cave high in canyon wall, Los Alamos County, New Mexico. Smoke on white pumice cave wall contrast with the scratched image. Okay, so they added smoke to it to make it to make it stick, I guess. Hmm. So yeah, so they have the he he's represented on here, and then right here in the middle wrong with my hands is the plum ser serpent okay and that's that serpent energy right so it's showing <clears throat> spiritually it's showing coco paley using his music to awaken the kundalini energy as they call it in the spine of woman and man okay so a lot of people don't know you can get into the medical aspect of women and our sexuality a lot of our sexuality is that, that a lot of the feeling and the nerves come from the spine, which a lot of people don't know. That's why these fools be trying to give you a back massage beforehand. <laughs> Did I tell y'all cover the children's ears? <laughs> because they don't even, people don't even know what they're doing, but you are waking, awakening that uh, sexual energy through the spine. Okay, and that's where um, the feeling comes from, comes from that, from the spinal energy. Right. Uh, you said how, how how I find out how to register as Indigenous Indian of Virginia. Uh, you're gonna have to go through your tribe for that. I don't know. You can't just re register as an individual. You you're part of your tribe or your clan, so you have to go through your tribe for that. So while some authorities say the flute is a blowgun. Advocates of the musical instrument theory are in the majority. Man has been tootling through a nosepipe since the late Stone Age, virtually all over the world. Usually a man's instrument forbidden to women. So usually a man's instrument is forbidden to women. So women did not. You really didn't see, no, you didn't see women with the flute. You might see women with the drum, but you didn't see them with the flute. A tube of, okay, usually a man's instruments forbidden to women. A tube of reed, bone, or wood similar to the mouth flute 
was played by blowing nostril breath through one end. That don't sound good. You want booger flutes? Wait. <laughs> Peace and Digi. And Digi, I'm sorry. Uh, people don't know what they're doing. Right, David. They don't know what they're doing. Like, you got to use all these. You know, that's why they try to get people into tantra, tantra and all this stuff. But it's really quite simple. Don't touch my horn. <laughs> you don't want to touch this, this horn with snot and all this stuff in it. Natives of Tahiti used to close one nostril with the thumb while waggling the other fingers along note holds in the tube. Okay. I got to see that. I, <laughs> I'm trying to envision it in my head. I got to see that. Peace, hip hop lender. Do you have any information on the word Aboriginal? It says ab means not and not original. Yeah, I did a whole video on it like a year or two ago. If you go look for it, just search for, for Aboriginal, search for Tasha She Aboriginal. It should come up. I did a whole video breaking down the word and it doesn't mean not or way. It means of the original people, right? Uh, buffalo skin drums, right? The drum, and there's a frequency. So with instruments, there's definitely a frequency and a certain frequency that we had our instruments tuned to that taps into the universal energy, okay? And it, we had healing drums that would heal you. The flute heals you. Like you see here, the flute, is awakening that energy in the spine, the kundalini, kundalini, as they call it, energy. Okay, or the she energy, right? Did y'all catch that? <laughs> the she energy is awakening in your spine. Okay, your spine is uh, the tree of life, Jacob's ladder. Okay, so some clans preferred the left nostril, others the right. Some anthropologists surmise that nose music arose from the belief of primitive man that the soul or life spirit entered and left the body through the nose. Now, who else do we know believe that? The ancient Egyptians, you would see the mummies, they would pull the brain through the nostrils, through the nose, cut the, cut the nostril right here so they can stick something, wire something up there and pull the nose, pull the, um, pull the brain through. Okay. You said you were looking at Taina art and, and reminded me so much of graffiti, right? Yeah. Those are the descendants, right? The exclaim, God bless you, uttered when a person sneezes may be rooted in the same belief. The nostril breath possesses magical powers. Okay, so that's why they blow in the boogers in the flute. You said, no, no. <laughs> that's why they were doing that. Uh, Coco, the Coco Pelli figure has been found in ruins of pit house people dating as early as 200 AD and as late as the 16th century, where it appears in association with drawings of men on horseback. Men armored and men in cows. Cows is a like a robe, robe, robe type thing. Okay, there's the picture. South, southwest, west fabric design, silver earrings and large. So I have, you know, see the earrings that I have. I don't know if y'all can see it. So I have the Coco Pele earrings as well. Um, so they will wear these like long um, things, like what they do. And if y'all know how the Muslim men dress or those type of things, they wear those big robe like dress things, but it's not for women. It's for men. <laughs> if y'all get it, it looks like a suit kind of. But y'all can look up robes and see what I'm talking about. Silver, yeah, this is silver. And it has a little piece of. I don't know if y'all can see it. It has a little piece of turquoise in it, too. Uh, the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors and missionaries did more than establish a historical date as a base. Throughout the Inquisition, slavery, starvation, 
and disease, the natives were all but obliterated. I don't know about that. Life in, like I've already told y'all what they did. They enslaved those people and sent them to the South, okay? They sent them to the Caribbean. They sent them to Brazil, other places, okay? They may even send some people to the South, Southern, South, what, the South Pacific. Excuse me, I'm over here stuttering. All right. You said we have to get back to nature and everything natural, right? And that's this is what this is talking about. You get into the deities, you know. I'm not saying y'all got to leave y'all beliefs behind, but you need to learn the knowledge, okay? Learn it as a history. But you got to you got to learn the spiritual stuff. This is the main thing that they took from us and that they're hiding, okay? That's what they call it the occult. Occult means occult means hidden hidden information. That's all that means. It's not, not nothing satanic. When you know hidden information, it gives you power. It doesn't mean you got to go around casting hexes and all that stuff. No, you don't have to do that. But you need to know the information so you know what's going on and you know how they're using this information against us now. Okay, simple as that. Like you see the Super Bowl and all these different things. Those are just big rituals. And a lot of it's based on our old stuff, okay? So I showed y'all before how they had, Je I think it was Jennifer Lopez and Shakira, if y'all follow me on my Facebook, how they had them basically dressed up as these uh, Mayan goddesses, and they were using that energy to take from us, right? Uh, the more the truth we unravel, the harder the wicked ones fall. Exactly. Exactly, because they're using some of this stuff in satanic rituals. They're using it for a negative, not a positive, like our ancestors used it. All right, before, did I read that one? Before the arrival of this, no, I'm up here. Through the Inquisition, slavery, and starvation, and disease, the natives were all but obliterated. You know, that's not true. Life in the Southwest was never again the same for Coco Pele and his people. Before the arrival of the Spaniards, however, pinning down historical dates become difficult to the point of impossibility. Some, something can be learned from the chemistry of the petroglyphs etched on the smooth faces of the basalic cliffs and caves. Because we had caves and we lived in caves too, okay? We gotta get out of, we gotta get out of that, um, uh, the Pan African and Pali. Oh, they lived in caves. They're savages, and they in the Caucasus Mountains. No, we lived in caves too, all over the world. Okay, even even their their Pan African ancestors lived in caves in Africa. Okay, so who like I'm not even gonna get in that. They'll say they live they from the caves, and then they say the first man was black, and he went in the cave, and then he came out white. <laughs> Can you make sense? Just, just make some sense of what you're saying, okay? Something can be learned from the chemistry of the petroglyphs etched in smooth. Okay, I already read that. The drawings are packed and scratched through the dark brown patina known as desert varnish. The products of centuries of slow oxidation of the minerals in the rock. So this is a science that they use. They didn't just, they just not just scratching stuff. They knew that it will oxidize and that will keep the image there longer than them just using chalk or paint or whatever. So even when the paint went away, you still got the picture there, right? Oh, y'all rolling, y'all laughing at me. <laughs> Talking about the caveman, the caveman. Back to the caves. Well, your ancestors been caves too. Okay, y'all look through West Africa, North Africa. Okay, we see the Southwest. We see Mexico, different places. Even the East Coast, we were living in caves. Okay, nothing wrong with caves. The drawings are pet. Okay, I already read that. The artwork exposes lighter colored rock beneath the patina. Then over the centuries, the lighter colored rock will darken again and in time become virtually invisible. Okay, so they were trying to keep it alive using this technique. And this is something right here. I don't know what this, I don't know what that's about. You see him, Coco Pele. So he's all over these things, right? 
all over the south, the southwest, and things like that. Casual scratchings by vandals are readily apparent because of their color and may be erased by park staff, as have those at Utah's newspaper rocks. Did I read that right? Yeah, newspaper rock state park. Displaying thousands of figures, the rocks obviously serve as a kind of bulletin board for people with no written alphabet. We well, know that's not true. They had the alphabet. But here's the because they don't understand. You see that? And y'all see these, y'all will see these things in rap videos. Uh, I believe Buster Rhymes had a video where he had stuff glowing in the dark and he had the women with the paint on them and all that it's back in the day. I was about to hate 20 years ago. Um, you'll see those throughout these fat videos. They drop in little, little, little seeds, little clues for everybody. Right, the ancestors left signs and symbols and sigils. Now, these all these signs, you can put one sign up. Look at this. Put one sign up, and it means several different things. And giving you, you see the three stars here. Right, that's representing the Orion star system, or it can just be a star, or it can be a star person representing. You see all these different signs that mean different things, and you'll see these same ones with Etruscans and different Greeks because these people are related, right? And I'm gonna get into the all that later. Um, once I get some more receipts <laughs> about the tribes that came out of. Uh, of the Mexican area, Guatemala over there, um, Belize, where's the other place? Costa Rica, Mexico. All right, all these places that have the Mayan or Maya culture and the Maya pyramids, they have a connection with other places and other pyramids, right? That came from here. He said, fascinating. Yeah, we're going to get more into him right now. But you can see right here with Coco Pele, and you see the star above his head, right? And I don't know what the symbol is, but all this stuff has meaning. All of it has meaning to it. Two of the figures appear to be much older than the others, since they have become much darker than their neighbors. Also, the carvings must have been made when the flood plain, when the flood plain at the base of the rock was much higher than it is now. Okay, another thing is a lot of the sea levels have changed in this area too. Uh, some of y'all, you know, people ask why they have these apartments or cave dwellings up high in the cliff of the mountains, but really it was the sea level was up there, okay? You probably could have a boat come right up to where those people were. I doubt they were up there uh, thirsty and dehydrated Okay, the name of the book, Coco Belly, Casanova of the Cliff Dwellers by John B. Young. So, yeah, that's, you know, it's something to think about. Like, everything we see now is not the way that it used to be. Even all on the East Coast, I can, I can speak for Virginia. Um much of Virginia is underwater right now. That whole East Coast over there, um, uh, Virginia Beach area, the Tidewater area, probably half of that is underwater at least from from just from when um, the British and the Spanish arrived there. A lot of it's underwater. They had to recreate certain things from Jamestown because it's underwater. Okay, certain cities that we had over there. Uh, because we, the pirates, and did rule that coastline is underwater. Let's see what else. Um, erosion of the terrain over the centuries has left the top of the rock high and dry and quite inaccessible without tall ladders. Another notable feature of the newspaper rock carving is the presence of large six toed or six feet, yeah, six toed feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? six-toed feet, suggesting that there are, that they have many, what? let me read that again, because I'm, I'm messing myself up, so let's stop. Um, another notable feature of the newspaper rock carvings is the presence of large six-toed feet, 
suggesting that there may have been a clan or family of six-toed people who were regarded as gods in any case worthy of being reported on the rock. And like I said, y'all can follow um, uh, Six Finger She on um, Instagram. I think that's his still his name, Quincy Hot. He put out a lot of this information about the Six Toed and Six Fingered people. And this is right here is telling you right now that they were regarded as gods or some type of higher standing person. I already explained, if y'all missed it, I explained earlier that in our culture, a person that we call gods, we're not like uh, the great spirit. It was a person who has achieved a certain level of enlightenment or knowledge and who would in the next afterlife or, you know, they would become part of the creation or the great spirit or God. Okay. Uh, the scientific term for six toes is Palo Dyk Tyg. Palo Dyk I'm sorry. I know how to say this word. I'm going to say all the big words and then all the other ones are a little bit easier. I've been messing up. Which does not help much since it simply means many digits. Okay. And this one, oop. Let me pull it back. So Y'all can see it. So you see his little feet? Like little baby feet. <laughs> Y'all know how baby feet little flat feet? You can see the little six toes on it. And he's on his back. Like he's still... He's still playing that flute, right? That's all he do is play, right? He's shooting in the gym. A pair of recumbent figures in the, what does that say? To say Bengay modern valley after Campbell photo. Okay, so you see that? Shooting in the gym. He said that's true. Okay. Yeah. Wilbury split is the product of a hurricane in Norfolk. Right. All that stuff, man. I'm telling y'all, like half of it's underwater. So we've got a lot of artifacts and things underwater um, that they don't they didn't really tell us about it. You said, you want to see it again, cousin? All right. And I got this. Uh, I, got a, I got a lot of my books from used bookstores. So I got this from. McKay's bookstore in Manassas, Virginia. And it was only $2.75. They don't know the jewel that they had up in there. And I'll give them a shout out. They probably gonna raise the price on it. <laughs> They're gonna raise the price on these, these type of books. Okay, now back to Coco Pele, whose outstanding feature was not his feet. Oh, y'all better go cover the kids' ears. <laughs> to cover the children's ears. Let <clears throat> me get some water for that one. The reason Coco Pele has a name is fairly simple. The Hopi people of central Arizona aptly called archaeology on the hoof. Make a variety of kachina dolls to sell to tourists. Along Among the dolls is one they call Coco Pele and his wife is called Coco Pele Mana. Coco is hunchback and plays the flute. Formerly, he was vividly phallic. <laughs> y'all laughing? <laughs> Do y'all, I don't think y'all know what phallic means. That's why I said cover the children's ears. Some people don't know what phallic means. Okay, they keep saying he's phallic. Phallic is a penis. That's what phallic means, okay? So just like they will say, um, they talk about like the Washington Monument or the obelisk or symbols of Osiris's phallic. Right, yes. Yes, Shiri. Uh, that's what the phallic means, okay? This is just a scientific term, okay? Formerly, he was vividly phallic. But the missionaries persuaded the Indians to omit this feature in the interest of what they, the missionaries, call decency. You see my face? I was like, I got to get some water, y'all. All right, I'm about to show y'all the picture in a second. Um, the Hopis did not consider sex to be indecent. 
and it was merely absurd. It's okay, because some of them kept on to the tradition. Yes, <laughs> yes, flamethrower. That's what it means. So they basically neutered him now because the missionaries were so offended. You know, they don't brainwash the people over there. Um, but the phallic has a certain energy, right? The divine or sacred masculine energy, uh, which comes from the sun. And once again, uh, Quincy Hot or Six Finger She pointed that out a couple months ago, talking about that energy. Okay. So y'all see. <laughs> Flame throw you out. <laughs> That's why I said cover the now you gotta cover the children's eyes too. Unless y'all unless you got high schoolers I can see this. So you see that the petroglyph of Coco Pele and Shield Sun. Okay, so these are symbolic of certain energies. Y'all rolling now. Or certain <laughs> y'all see that right? That's down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, little bear is not around, so okay. we can talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, you see that. Y'all see that, right? So this is what Coco Pele represents, and that's um that's the fertility, right? They 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 gotta represent him right. <laughs> okay, so that's that picture is from Volcano Cliffs near Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay, so you see that. So the sun energy is also female, right? So you see the male and the sun. Okay, we when we're born, we come out of the sun. This is what is representing the womb right here. Okay, I think I said masculine earlier, but the sun is feminine energy. Okay, and it can also be certain cultures, it can be mass. The moon is feminine energy. Okay, we have grandmother moon on the east coast. Um, in the woodland cultures, we have grandmother moon energy. Um, you and James, you should go out and see these petroglyphs. So, you're in Jamestown, New Mexico, that's what it's representing. You said, Rise with the sun. <laughs> Flame throw you out. <laughs> Wait, but what Shiva said, you said you can miss it. I'm going to miss what you said. You said, you said morning rising. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. So here's another one, recumbent Coco Pele Monument Valley after Campbell. I don't know what after Campbell means. I don't know what they're talking about. That's him on his back. I they don't neutered him. Okay. And they took his toes away, if you see that. He only got three Three digit toes. They took three of his toes away. So those are symbolic things. And this, this is basically what they did to us in our culture. You said this is across all Amnesty systems, especially Kemet. Well, when you get down to the history, the the, Kem the Kemetic culture in their system comes from uh, Mesoamerica. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about that another day. I gotta get some more receipts for y'all for that. Uh, like most genuine kachinas, Coco Pele used to have a human counterpart in a kachina dancer, the pers personification of a giant who lived in the mountains. Right? What Coco Pele used to do with explicit gestures to the missionary ladies. <laughs> and female tourists before they learn what the gesture meant and why the Indians were convulsed with the mirth would be worth elucidating. <laughs> what in the world, what in the freak Nick is going on here? Um, Coco Pelli's exaggerated phallic appearance could, <laughs> could have been due to uh, Priasmism, pre what? Priasmism or to tuberculosis. Okay, this is this is what they, this is European men think. <laughs> tuberculosis. Or more likely to be the common superstition that holds all hunchbacks to be fertile symbols. Okay. 
He said, can I do a live on Oki? Yes, I'm trying to get some um, more receipts for Oki too. Um, get into Oki's, Okias. Many primitive peoples welcome Cocopelli around corn planting time. Baron wives sought his company. Unmarried maidens fled from him in terror. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll keep laughing at this. I get I need to be a little bit more mature. Oh my gosh. They all in these comments. They're selling Kachina dolls out here. Yeah. Kachina has strong energy. This is what they're telling you. They have strong energy. It says Priya Priapus in both Greek and Roman ancient religions, lore, religious lore, was a fertility uh, fertility god of gardens and herbs. The son of Aphrodite and Dionys Dionysus, he was dedicated as a grotesque little man with an enormous phallus. Obviously important in fertility rights. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Anyways, so here's another petroglyph. It says two small dancing figures were probably versions of Cocopelli without the flute. These are among many petroglyphs and San Cristobal ruins. Okay, and you'll see him again with the little wing dreadlocks. He got like two, two at the top, like antennae. And you see the Kundalini energy. I'm sorry, it's not like I'm in underwater. You'll see all these different things, right? This is life force. That's, that's, you see it? It looks like a galaxy. So all these different things that look like chicken scratch. Look at this here. I don't know about y'all, but that look like two men. Uh, I see phalluses right there. My nails, I didn't finish taking the nail polish off. But y'all see that? This Coca, one of them, Coca Pele. I don't know who the other one is. So maybe some man he helped with fertility. I don't know what they. <laughs> Thank you, flamethrower. Y'all, please share this video out. I'm telling you, they shadow banned me, so I'm not getting a lot of views like I used to. Like if y'all look at the numbers and y'all see my, how many subscribers I got compared to other channels, and we're getting the same views, it's not making sense. It's not. I'm only getting ten percent of the. I'm getting 10% of my views from subscribers, right? So 10% of the subscribers are actually watching the video. That makes sense. Because they're not, people are telling me they're not getting notifications. They're not getting, um, they're not getting a lot of information, uh, getting the videos. They're not seeing the videos. So these are Orabi women and maiden preparing food. It's supposed to be when this, you know, 1875. So these people are beside her, beside this sister here. These ones a little, you know, they're mixed in. You know, see, she got little Afro puffs. This girl here in the back. You said, Can he walk with that leg? <laughs> Liz, you must stop it. <laughs> you said circumcision. Um, I don't believe these people did circumcision. I don't believe they did that. All right. You said read the comment by Lloyd. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I usually see Lloyd's comment. Let me go back up. And I keep forgetting to click it. Wow, where is this comment? Oh, yeah. I, I just said something about Oki. You said, can you do a live show on Loki sometime in the future? Yes. Yeah. You said circumcision is foreign. Right. Yeah, we didn't really deal, deal with that. And you know what? With circumcision, it's cutting off, like I said, some of that energy. You're cutting off some of the nerves at the end. Okay, I'm just not getting that skin fold at the top and cutting some of the nerves. I'm trying to use my words wisely because this is already pushing it for the children. I just like to say, cover their ears and their eyes with this one. 
unless they're teenagers. Some middle school kids are mature. Uh, the name Coco Pele may derive from Zuni and Hopi names for a god, Coco. And a desert robber fly they call Pele. Hmm. That predatory insect has a hump on its back and some deplorable habits such as stealing the larva of other flies. Okay. <laughs> I thought they were going to say stealing something else. Stealing people's wives or something. Some of the drawings on pottery of the Ho-Ho Cam and Meme Breeze people are, are, uh, are a prehistoric Southern Arizona look more like insect than a man. Okay, so they're going to show this one. Angular version of Coco Pelle in a cave in Pajarito Plateau. Note how long the horn suggests it's an insect. Okay. So these things are also suggesting energy. Of course, they're, they're doing a lot of guessing. But spiritually, insects have a certain energy as well. Okay. Especially, especially the ones that fly. I mean, y'all still rolling. Oh my gosh. So the book is very interesting. It's a short book too. It's like um no more than 30 pages. That's why I'm reading it to y'all. <laughs> However, it's among for the present day Pueblo people of New Mexico and Arizona that the bulk of the Coco Pele legends are still current until fairly recent times. At San Il Defonso. He was known as a wandering minstrel with a sack of songs in his bag. Now, what did that sound like? <laughs> that sounded like the Chipman circuit to me. Yep, it's a wandering minstrel with a sack of songs on his back. Hey, Shell. In the Aladdin tradition, he traded new songs for old and was greeted as a har harbinger, I don't know what that is, a harbinger of fertility and a god of harvest. That's probably why the corn corn ladies liked them. All right. Ciao. So they have a picture of old South Kiva in San Il Defonso. <coughs> <coughs> Right here. What to do? At Hano, on the Hopi First Mesa, occupied by Pueblo refugees from southern, I mean from central New Mexico, Coco Pele and his wife are painted black. Painted black. <coughs> now, some of us know that a lot of these American Indian deities were painted as black in color, a very dark skinned, right? Very dark, Grace Jones color, dark brown. He is said to be a character they call ne Neope Kwai I, which means big black man. <coughs> Receipts. <coughs> mm. Cut this fan off, y'all. Give me a second. Oh. Oh. <laughs> y'all see that, right? <laughs> Big black man. Oh. I'm not making stuff up. Then it says this could be not be none other than Esteban, the giant Moor. <clears throat> who local who guided Fray Marcos de Niza, Niza and his party on their ill-fated exploration of southern Arizona in 1539. <clears throat> All right. So they're comparing him. They call him the big black man, <clears throat> right? And then they're likening him to Esteban the Moor, the, the European guy that he was wild, y'all. So they have a whole bunch of stories about 
And maybe I'll do another video on Esteban, but they have a whole bunch of stories of him and his crazy behind terrorizing the women, right? Which they weren't standing for that, right? Because we respect women in our cultures here. All the cultures here, we respect women. So having some guy come from Europe over here terrorizing women, it was a problem. That's why he ended up dead, right? That's the biggest, like one of the biggest violations you can do is disrespect women. And that was, you got your butt beat or you got killed. Okay, and that's what happened to him. He got his butt beat a couple times and he got away. And then they finally caught his behind. Okay, he was assaulting and violating women. Okay. So, anyways. Esteban was more interested in the comely Zuni women than he was in the fabled seven cities of Cibola, the party was that the party was seeking. He made passes at the girls. The men decided he was no god after all and shot him full of arrows. Then they buried him under a pile of rocks. That's what he get. Watching from a safe distance, Marcos, Deniza, and the rest of the party hastily erected a cross and then took off for Mexico City where they had some hairy tales to tell. Okay, so they, you know, see how they do? Spanish people, them, they ain't even try to help him. They was like, whoop, pew, gone. They, were not, they probably tried to tell him to behave himself. He got crazy. So, and this is the doorway that ruined Wall and Hano, Hopi First Mesa. One of the towns, I guess Esteban was in. Y'all see that. So are there any black anthropology archaeology groups? There uh I used to be on one on um Facebook. I think it's called the Black Archaeologist. Um that's when I was into that stuff, but um that's the only one I can think of. All right, this is the Zuni Pueblo people. This is 1883. You see they still dark, but you can see they have a have a mixture in there. This, oh my God, I didn't even finish my nails. <clears throat> they still dark a little bit on here. Okay. You said turquoise moon. Okay, I'm gonna look upside down, child. At Arabi, another Hopi village, Kokopeli is said to have a sack of deerskin shirts and moccasins to barter for brides, a modified version of the Esteban legend. Elsewhere among the Hopi, he is said to spread his time sewing on shirts and seducing the daughters of the household, while his wife, Kokopeli Mana, runs the men. Okay, girl. <laughs> so she running the men while he in the house sewing. But yeah, that's another thing. Like a lot of our men, we they made clothes on their downtime. They were stitch and make clothes and shoes. You know, now they've kind of well, no, they have a lot of male uh, fashion designers, but yeah, like it's a feminine thing to know how to sew. But our men used to sew. Like everybody had to know how to sew. And our men so you know, they sold stuff more than the women. Like most of the women did like mending and things like that, but the men had to sew so like they had to be make outfits because uh while women were cooking dinner, they over there sewing and fixing their shoes and they had a hole in it and the moccasins, things like that. Okay. You say truly thank you, clever star. Thank you. This is almost done. Yet. Oh no, I got a couple pages. Yeah, we should be done. So, Esteban trying to be a player, right? He trying. He's using that cook. So he got a bit of that Coco Pele energy, that Casanova energy in him. But he used it in the wrong way, just like the dude on how to be a player. She just here to dance. That's it. She's not trying to be with you, Esteban. That's you know. Hey. That's what happens. And he got his butt killed. What'd you say? Homie lost it when he got at them American Indian shorties, right? He got the they ain't gonna fool. Like you they give you warnings now. Our people will give you a warning about it. 
Let's see what else you question. Yeah, you're gonna get the warning, but after that, they they just shot him. They're like, we're not playing with this dude. We get to hear about our ancestors. Yeah, we gotta we gotta spread the information because a lot of lot of people not talking about it unless we talk about it. Okay, they're not gonna talk about it. Yep. You said hit different. Y'all are wild, she <laughs> she been. She be in flamethrower. Y'all wild in them comments. I'm telling y'all. Too funny. Oh, give me a second. Trying to get this. <clears throat> Trying to get my breath because I'm getting hoarse. Getting hoarse for a second. Y'all are wild and out. Let me see these comments coming in. Oh, I just turned that fan off. They also made those blankets and knit it. And I also had dye. Right, right. I got one of my blankets here. This is not an authentic one, but I'll show y'all idea. Look at the blanket. <clears throat> the designs and things. So all these designs, this design here, these they have meanings to them. The shapes and the shapes within the shapes. These are spiritual meanings, okay? And this shape here, where's the shape? Y'all can see it. This means star. Star from the sky, the universe, or a star being. This is what that means. Okay, so all this stuff has meanings to it. <clears throat> um, yeah, men make blankets too. Men and women make blankets. Depends on the culture. But, you know, because the men have, they talk, they talk bad about our men having so much downtime. But the men were doing productive things. Right, even it with them sitting there smoking the pipe, that was a form of meditation. So the European people didn't understand it. They thought our men were lazy. Um, but if they were hunting all day, they were tired. They sat down and smoked the pipe. They might have stitched up some some moccasins or something. Uh, you know, hey, that's a form of spiritual um, meditation. Okay, so let me get back to the book. Let's see. Coco Pegley figures prominently in the obscure blue feather legend of the Navajos. This ancient tale says that the wandering Zuni named Blue Feather, who was very skillful with throwing sticks used like dice, <laughs> bankrupted the great city of Pueblo Bonito and Chaco Canyon, now a national historical park. So uh, he was throwing them dice, like <laughs> shake them up, shake them up, shake them, throwing them dice that he done bankrupt the whole city. Like what the heck? Throwing them dice so good he bankrupt the whole city, y'all. That's, that's wild. Now you know that's our people, right? Shake it. <laughs> Alito Cantrell. Yeah, you know that's our people. Shake them up, shake them. <laughs> this action led to the city's downfall. What? In the 13th century, the story as the story goes. What? So he took the whole city down with this dice game. That's crazy. Oh my goodness, those one of them trappers and them yappers and them whappers. Um, let's see. Not satisfied with winning all the tribal treasure and the lands, Blue Feather took over the run up the running of the city. What in the world? His delusions of grandeur led him to woo and win one of the city's sacred vestals versions. Vestal versions. What? So he was a player player. This act of sacrilege brought down the terrible wrath of the gods in the form of a drought and disease. What? He thought it was a drought. Y'all wrote <laughs> what Future said. They thought it was a drought. So he's like, he doesn't match a future back then. This is, this is what he is. This is Blue Feather. He's basically Future in the past. <laughs> 
They thought it was a drought. <laughs> the surviving people all ran away and the city collapsed, <laughs> leaving Blue Feather burned in the ruins. Dang. Okay. Um, so basically he was trapping and shaking, shaking them dice. And he's trying to holler at this young lady and, and the people got pissed off and the wrath of God came and they thought it was a drought. So. <laughs> As manservant to Blue Feather and bodyguard for the heroine of the peace, the hunchback Coco Pele either died in the ruins with his master or ran off with the girl, <laughs> according to the version you prefer. What? Oh goodness, he he played a he did a Michael B. Jordan ran off with Lori Harvey, huh? <laughs> I thought it was a drought. I thought it was a drought. Okay, so here is his quartet of the jam session and Southwest Sun right here. Right here. Uh oh, legendary top cast in the building. Peace. Yep, they thought it was a drought. Ruins and Canyon del Chile. Okay, this is where we lived in the caves. You see them houses? We had apartments. We had apartments. We lived in the apartments. This is 1890, the ruins of Canyon del Chile. Right here. So you can see the bricks. All right, bricks. All right, bricks. Hello, Nicole. I haven't seen you in a minute. On here. We got y'all these bricks. Okay, right here. <clears throat> Let me show y'all if you can see them closer. You can see that they're bricks, right? So we have bricks and buildings and all this stuff. So these ruins are older than 1890, of course. They're older than that. What's up, Golden Moon? Uh, the Navajo tribe owns and guards one of the finest arrays of Coco Pele's figures ever discovered. A long frieze of hunchback flute players adorn a huge boulder, sheltering a small ruin in the remote part of Monument Valley. The ruin was named Flute Player House by the archaeologists who excavated in 1820. The real origin of these symbols, like other relics of the arcane, Indian world may be futile <clears throat> to serve in 20th century Anglo-Saxon terms and modes of thought, okay? Shell, did you say? Oh, thank you, Shell. You said you sent me something on PayPal. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Chris, hey Chris, uh, you finally got a chance to catch me late. Yeah, because y'all know how I do. I'd be all random. Appreciate you, Chris. One of my day ones for Facebook. All right, let's see. Perhaps there really was a hunchback minstrel with an eye for the girl somewhere in the dim past. I, I think so whose memory has come down through the ages like that of the wandering Jew, okay? Or perhaps the same legend sprang up simultaneously among this desperate, this, um, disparate, excuse me, people with no contact, although this seems unlikely. So they're saying the story of the wandering Jew or whatever story that is, comes from Coco Pele, right? In any case, the notion of a footloose and hunchback <laughs> footloose, hunchback flute player with the gift of fertility must have satisfied some deep yearning of the ancient people, or they would not have nurtured the legend all the way down to present day. Okay, so some old footloose. <laughs> Basically, one of the uh, traveling players, musicians, you know how some of the musicians are, some of them. Uh, going around spreading seeds are the house of Chief Tal T and Orabi. Okay, so we had towns like they want to, oops, 
They want to act like we live in huts. This is clearly a town. They got apartments with ladders. Okay, so the Pueblo people had apartments. The people lived, you know, different levels, two, three level places, like apartments or duplexes. So this is what was standing in 1875. Just imagine before then what it looked like. Sound like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> no, because this guy was a cool player. He was like a, you know, a musician. He traveled like hunchback of Notre Dame. He was stuck in that. What, what was that? A tower or something? Yeah, he was stuck in a tower. He said drought happened within our bodies due to disobedience to the ancestors. Right. We sure is thirsty and droughted. Some of these people, you see how they acting out here. They got they they thirsty and droughted. They dehydrated in the mind. Okay, White House ruin in Canyon de Chile. Okay, you can see more of the apartment. I'll take this off screen. Say greetings, greetings. How you doing? Oh, okay. Apartments. You see how that is in the cliff, and you can tell, like I was saying, that the wa the water levels were higher. It wasn't just dry desert. It wasn't just dry desert. Okay. And this is the last. I think this is the end of the book here. Uh, the wrought iron security grill. Bati's Indian arts in Tucson. So those in Tucson, I guess you can come to this. To this restaurant and you'll see some of the artwork on there coco pele and other symbolism in tucson arizona so yeah this is this little small book this is page 22 and then it's like this large bibliography you can see some of the pictures oh child cover children's eyes on this one. you can see some of the Pictures in the bibliography. He got the little Wayne things hanging outside his head. <laughs> oh, the phallic deity, as you see. And this is High Walls and Ladders, Hanno, First Mesa, Hopi Village. Mesa means circle. It's 1875. You see the apartments. You can see it a little clearer now. They got steps too. And windows and doors, okay? So we had technology. All right. And Galisteo Basin, Coco Pele seems to be wearing a helmet and blowing a horn rather than a flute. A shield or sun symbol is in front of him. You see the sun. So he's invoking that energy. And like I said, the sun is feminine energy. So he is uh, tantalizing that energy. <laughs> the divine feminine and the divine masculine meet is fertility, right? Uh, another picture, cave, uh, mummy cave and ruin in Canyon del Muerto. So they don't ever talk about the mummies in North America. They even talk about the, you know, you'll hear about the Peruvian. Peruvian mummies, but you don't hear about our mummies up here. Okay, so they were in the caves. Like I told y'all, we lived in the caves. Okay, we had mummification back in the day. So that picture's from 1890. Uh, but we know that's much older. The actual cave is much older, probably thousands of years. This is a pot belly. What? A pot belly coco pelly toots. Ooh, in my stomach. To another horn, St. John's, Arizona. I got to eat y'all, so I'm about to get off here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you see his humpback? And his flute. They got ball-headed on this one, so they got him looking like baby. <laughs> I'm looking like baby on this one. <laughs> you said not again. <laughs> yeah, the... the, the yeah, the phallus that they showed on there. Uh, almost identical recumbent figures of uh, Sonora, Mexico, and in the cave at Canyon de Chile, Arizona, suggest the Coco Pele resting at home. 
the Mexican figure found in the cave is almost 10 feet long. So we could have the story possibly came from Mexico because he's resting at home in this picture. And he bald headed on that one. Here's the other one. He got the, the nose flute right here. This one. You said that one thought that was best. No, that's best. <laughs> I haven't, I, I don't even think I ate anything today. I've been out here reading books, trying to put something together for y'all, because you know I don't be on here. <laughs> it says, this horn, Cocopelli from <laughs> Chiniquela, New Mexico, may be the Navajo hunchback god who carries a spear or wand and a pack of seeds in his back. He's also called water sprinkler. Okay, so he carried the seeds, so the seeds are literally a representation of impregnation. Damn, it's impregnation. Pregnancy. <laughs> I don't think that's a word. Impregnation. Oh, goodness. Oh, I appreciate you, Flamethrower. Y'all got me started. You and Sheba. Y'all got me started. Uh, so that's the end of the book. Nothing else besides the back of it, if y'all want to see this one. It says, Coco Paley, who is he? The water sprinkler, the wandering minstrel, fertility enhancer, or simply a hunch like flute player. But yeah, did you see the locks, right? You see what we're dealing with. Y'all saw the phallus as well. Y'all saw that as well. So, um, is fasting useful as for indigenous people? Yes, fasting resets your all your organs. Okay. Uh, I usually fast on Sunday until later. And that's just come to tradition when people used to wait for, for the grandma or big mama to cook the meal, the Sunday dinner, right? Um, and then in our cultures as well, when we had our Thanksgivings, the people would not eat until the meal was done. We would only have more, that one meal for the whole day. So they would fast the whole day. And it's a spiritual thing because you're cleaning your spirit as well as you're resetting the organs in your body. Okay, but I usually on Sunday, I don't eat nothing until I just eat dinner and that's it. Uh, but I hope y'all enjoyed this. I don't know if y'all can get this book. I might try to PDF it for y'all. See if I can possibly do that and put it out. Y'all can have, hey little bear, I'm on the air. <laughs> your hair looks beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm about to sign off here. Oh. <laughs> well, hug. Hi, everyone. Hi. You taking a nap or something? <laughs> no, I was downstairs. Okay. I'll be out there. I'll be down there in a minute. Hey, little bear said hi to y'all. Okay, we'll make some. Yeah, we yeah, you don't eat. Like we know. We know that. You don't eat till everybody get there for some places. Or just until all the food is done. And you know they wait to the last minute. So you're eating food at in nighttime, right? They say it's going to be done at 3.30. And it ain't done till 6. <laughs> you know? A little beard and ran off, y'all. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he is handsome. Yeah, but yeah, fasting is good. Um used to fast all the time. I mean, you can do what you can do is you can do a water fast or you can just like only eat fruit, fruit and water, things like that. That vegetables probably be better to do that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the book is loaded. I showed y'all basically every page in the book. So, but I can try to PDF it. I have it for you. People uh, keep asking me if I have a Patreon or whatever. Um, I might do that just, you know, to be able to get, put some of these PDFs. I have a whole bunch of PDFs from like academic journals and stuff that cost money to get. I was just going to put out for y'all Patreons. Um, and once I do that, we'll see. Cause y'all keep asking about it. Cause I, I left it alone for years. Um, very sophisticated building and stuff in North America, right? They had apartments. That's the whole, the whole par apartment concept comes from, you know, those cliff dwellers and in America, right? Then we have the first uh, apartments. Peace, aphrodisiac. How you doing? 
So, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Please like the video, share it out, tell people about it, and let me know in the comments below how you feel about it. Um, do you have any questions? Do you have anything to add on? Or you have any suggestions for new videos? Okay. Uh, thank you. You you are hilarious, Shiva. Shibi. I know your last name was Shiva. I keep calling you Shiva. Shibi. Shibi and Flamethrower and the rest of y'all are hilarious. But yeah, let me go give me something to eat <laughs> and sign off here. So please share the video out. I'm telling you I'm getting shadow banned. So a lot of the subscribers excuse me, subscribers are not seeing the video or getting notifications. So if you guys share it out on your pages or, you know, text to the people or messenger people, the video, um, they'll be able to see it and they won't miss all this information. Okay. So this is the ancestors wanted y'all to know about Coco Pele today. And I might go do some more research on spiritual, like the herbs and stuff that the tribes use for these fertility um, rituals and things, but yeah, they had ceremonies and different things dedicated to Coco Pele and you know the Kachinas and things like that. Most of the people mostly talk about the Kachinas, but they don't really talk about what they were used for. So um, I can get get into that another time. All right, so appreciate you guys. So in the Powhatan language, to say goodbye, we say Ana. So Ana.